They lived in the misty hollows of Appalachia, isolated yet whispered about, people with olive-toned skin, dark hair, and features that didn't quite fit into the boxes of white, black, or Native American. The neighbors called them Melungeons, and for generations, no one could agree on who they really were. Some claimed they were the lost descendants of Portuguese sailors. Others said they had roots in the Middle East, or came from Moorish bloodlines, or were tied to mysterious travelers from the Old World. Some believed they were a forgotten tribe of Native Americans, or even Jews fleeing the Spanish Inquisition. The legends multiplied, especially because the Melungeons themselves often didn't know for sure. Their past had been erased by time, secrecy, and survival. In early America, being racially ambiguous was dangerous. The Melungeons lived through centuries of discrimination, often classified as free people of color or denied rights based on appearance alone. They settled in parts of Tennessee, Virginia, and Kentucky, where they kept to themselves and tried to preserve their dignity and independence. But the mystery of their origins only grew deeper with time. Today, that mystery is finally being unraveled, not by folklore or rumors, but by genetic science. Thanks to advances in DNA testing, scientists have traced the Melungeons' roots with a clarity never before possible. And the truth? It's more unexpected, more American, and more revealing than anyone could have guessed. This is the story of a people long misunderstood. A hidden chapter of American history. And a case study in how identity, race, and ancestry are far more complex than we've been told. Let's uncover the real genetic legacy of the Melungeons. The Melungeons were a group of families living mostly in the Appalachian regions of eastern Tennessee, southwestern Virginia, and eastern Kentucky. For centuries, they puzzled outsiders and historians alike. They didn't fit into the usual racial categories of early American society. They weren't white, black, or Native American by traditional definitions, but seemed to be some mix of all three. Locally, they were often marginalized and labeled as free people of color, which came with legal and social consequences in the 18th and 19th centuries. They were denied the right to vote, own land, or attend white schools. As a result, many Melungeons withdrew from public life, building tight-knit, rural communities and avoiding too much outside attention. What makes them even more mysterious is that the term Melungeon was never a label they gave themselves. It was often applied to them by outsiders, sometimes even as an insult. Early court records and census reports show inconsistent classifications. In some decades, they were marked as mulatto, in others Portuguese, Indian, or simply other. Their origins became wrapped in speculation, myth, and regional folklore. Over time, stories grew more elaborate. Some said the Melungeons were descendants of Portuguese sailors shipwrecked on the Carolina coast. Others believed they were remnants of Ottoman Turks brought over as indentured servants or Moors fleeing European persecution. There were even tales of Jews escaping the Spanish Inquisition or survivors of the lost Roanoke colony. These stories were passed down through generations, sometimes out of pride, sometimes out of confusion. One thing was clear, the Melungeons had always been survivors. They adapted, built isolated communities in the hills, and held on to their identity even as the world around them tried to define them. But without clear documentation or consistent family records, no one could say for certain where they came from or how their communities formed. That began to change in the 21st century. When modern DNA analysis became widely available, descendants of Melungeon families started to take genetic tests. The results finally began to cut through centuries of legend and assumption and revealed a genetic story far richer and more complex than anyone expected. For generations, the Melungeons were surrounded by more questions than answers. With no clear paper trail and few written records, their origin became the subject of wild speculation and imaginative storytelling, especially as their distinct appearance and ambiguous racial identity confused outsiders. One of the most common and enduring theories was the Portuguese myth. Many Melungeon families themselves claimed Portuguese ancestry, often as a way to avoid the harsh realities of being labeled black in the segregated South. Portigui or Portigé was a term sometimes used by early census takers to classify these families, reinforcing the belief. 
The story was that shipwrecked Portuguese sailors had married into Native American tribes or settled inland, thus creating a unique new community. Another widely circulated theory involved Ottoman Turks and Moors. Some 19th century writers suggested that Melungeons were descendants of Muslim slaves or indentured servants brought by early European colonists. Others even claimed the community descended from Turkish soldiers left behind after failed early expeditions or naval battles. Though far-fetched, these stories found a home in Melungeon folklore and were passed down as family lore. One particularly romantic legend connected the Melungeons to the lost colony of Roanoke. According to this version, survivors of that doomed English settlement intermarried with Native Americans and Africans, forming isolated mountain communities that later became known as Melungeons. A few more speculative claims link Melungeons to Sephardic Jews fleeing the Spanish Inquisition, or to Romani, Gypsy, migrants who had managed to escape slavery or discrimination in Europe. In almost all of these stories, the key thread was that the Melungeons were outsiders, mysterious, mixed, and misunderstood. Some of these myths were born from genuine efforts to trace ancestry. Others were invented out of necessity or survival in a racially rigid society. Claiming Portuguese or Turkish roots, for example, could offer a slightly higher social standing than being labeled black or mixed race in 1800s America. What's clear is that, while none of these theories held the complete truth, each one reflected the desire to belong and the effort to preserve dignity and identity. It wasn't until modern science entered the picture that the real answers started to surface, offering clarity where myth once reigned. For centuries, the Melungeons were shrouded in mystery. Who were they, really? Were they Portuguese, Turkish, Native American, African, or some mix of all? With few written records and countless conflicting stories, no one could say for sure. But in the 21st century, genetic science finally brought long-awaited answers. The real turning point came when researchers began using advanced DNA testing on self-identified Melungeon descendants, particularly those from eastern Tennessee, southwestern Virginia, and eastern Kentucky, regions where Melungeon families had lived for generations. In a 2012 study by Roberta Estes and colleagues, dozens of individuals with strong Melungeon genealogies participated in Y-DNA and mitochondrial DNA testing. The results were eye-opening. Instead of a single origin, the DNA painted a picture of a mixed ancestry group, one rooted in complexity. On the male side, Y-DNA, the majority of Melungeon lines traced back to sub-Saharan African and European ancestors. The African haplogroups most commonly found were consistent with West African origins, suggesting that enslaved or free African men contributed significantly to the early Melungeon gene pool. On the maternal side, MTDNA, the picture was different. Most maternal lines traced to European women, though a smaller portion showed Native American ancestry. This finding flipped the older myths. Melungeons weren't the descendants of lost Portuguese or Middle Eastern sailors. Instead, they were largely the product of unions between African men and European or Native American women, often occurring in the early colonial period. These DNA results also challenged the long-standing claim that Melungeons were of solely Portuguese or Turkish descent. While there may be occasional individual cases with such ancestry, the broader genetic pattern overwhelmingly pointed to African-European Native American mixtures. This triracial heritage helped explain not only their physical appearance, but also their unique cultural position, treated as outsiders by both white and black communities in the segregated South. What made the DNA evidence even more powerful was how it aligned with early records. In court documents and tax records from the 1700s and 1800s, Melungeons were often classified as free people of color, mulatto, or even black. This historical classification had been resisted for generations, partly due to racial stigma, but DNA proved that those labels had some factual basis. Perhaps most importantly, these genetic findings helped restore dignity to Melungeon identity. Rather than being defined by myth or shame, Melungeons could now embrace a more accurate, science-backed heritage. Their story became one of resilience, people of diverse backgrounds coming together and surviving in isolated mountain communities, despite discrimination and hardship. DNA didn't erase Melungeon mystery, but it reframed it. It showed how America's early frontier was more mixed than many historians admitted. 
and it gave Malungan descendants something solid to stand on, the truth of their roots, confirmed not by rumors, but by the code written in their blood. In early America, the intertwined concepts of race, identity, and law played a fundamental role in shaping the social, political, and economic landscape. From the colonial period through the early republic, legal frameworks were essential tools used to define and enforce racial hierarchies, which profoundly influenced individual and group identities. At the heart of this dynamic was the codification of race and law, which emerged most prominently through the institution of slavery. Although slavery existed globally in various forms, early American laws increasingly racialized the institution, tying enslavement specifically to African descent. For instance, Virginia's 1662 law establishing that a child's status followed that of the mother, partis sequitur ventrem, legally ensured that children born to enslaved women were also slaves. This law was crucial in entrenching racial slavery and demarcating clear boundaries between free and enslaved, white and black. Legal distinctions extended beyond slavery to shape notions of identity and belonging. Laws governing citizenship, voting rights, property ownership, and marriage often explicitly excluded non-white populations or restricted their rights, reinforcing racialized social hierarchies. For example, many colonies and later states passed laws prohibiting interracial marriage, aiming to preserve white racial purity and social order. Indigenous peoples faced dispossession through legal means, as treaties and laws facilitated the seizure of their lands, while often denying them full recognition as political entities or citizens. The development of racial categories also affected the experiences of free black people and other marginalized groups. Free African Americans navigated a legal landscape designed to limit their freedoms and maintain white supremacy, confronting laws that restricted movement, assembly, and economic opportunities. Similarly, Native American identity was frequently contested through legal mechanisms as the U.S. government sought to assimilate or remove tribes to expand settler territory. In summary, law in early America was not merely a neutral arbiter of rights and responsibilities, but a powerful instrument in constructing and maintaining racial identities and inequalities. These legal frameworks institutionalized race as a defining feature of identity, shaping the social fabric of the nation and laying the groundwork for centuries of racialized policy and conflict. The cultural legacy of early Amerian history, especially regarding race and identity, continues to deeply influence modern society, shaping contemporary understandings of heritage, justice, and belonging. As America grapples with its complex past, there is increasing recognition of the diverse contributions, struggles, and resilience of marginalized communities whose histories were long overlooked or suppressed. One of the most significant cultural legacies is the enduring impact of African American culture, which arose out of the experience of slavery, resistance, and survival. Despite the brutal oppression faced during early America, African Americans forged vibrant cultural traditions that have profoundly shaped American music, language, cuisine, religion, and art. From spirituals and blues to jazz and hip-hop, African-American cultural expressions have become cornerstones of national identity and global influence. Modern recognition of this legacy includes initiatives such as Black History Month, the preservation of historic sites like former plantations and underground railroad landmarks, and academic scholarship that highlights black contributions to American life. Similarly, Native American cultures continue to exert a powerful influence on American heritage and identity. Efforts to reclaim and revitalize indigenous languages, traditions, and governance practices reflect a broader movement toward honoring Native sovereignty and cultural survival. Museums, cultural centers, and educational programs increasingly emphasize indigenous perspectives, correcting historical narratives that marginalized or erased Native voices. Legal recognition of tribal sovereignty and land rights, while still contested, represents ongoing attempts to address centuries of displacement and cultural disruption. In addition, there is growing awareness of the complexities of racial and ethnic identities in America's past, including the experiences of mixed-race individuals, immigrants, and other marginalized groups. This broader understanding challenges simplistic narratives and encourages a more inclusive view of American identity one that acknowledges both the hardships endured and the rich cultural hybridity that defines the nation. 
Modern recognition also involves confronting the legacy of racial injustice embedded in law and society. Movements for racial equity and social justice seek to dismantle systemic inequalities rooted in early legal codes and cultural attitudes. Public dialogues, reparations debates, and reforms in education and criminal justice reflect ongoing efforts to reconcile with this history. Ultimately, the cultural legacy of early America is a dynamic, evolving story of survival, adaptation, and empowerment. Recognizing and honoring this legacy is essential not only for justice and healing but for building a society that values diversity and shared humanity. The Melungeons, an often misunderstood and historically marginalized group from the Appalachian region, offer a unique lens through which to explore the complexities of race, identity, and social hierarchy in American history. Their story challenges rigid racial categories and reveals how the intersections of ancestry, culture, and law shaped the lived experiences of many Americans. Melungeons are generally described as a mixed-race community with European, African, and Native American ancestry. For centuries, they lived in relative isolation in parts of Tennessee, Kentucky, and Virginia, often facing social exclusion and discrimination due to their ambiguous racial identity. The Melungeon experience exposes how early American society imposed strict racial binaries that failed to accommodate mixed identities, leading to systemic marginalization. Their history reveals the power of law in enforcing racial boundaries. In many states, laws based on one-drop or hypodescent rules meant that anyone with any African ancestry was classified as black, regardless of appearance or self-identification. This legal framework impacted Melungeons, who were frequently denied rights, subjected to segregation, and excluded from mainstream society. Their story thus highlights how race in America has been less about biology and more about social and legal constructs designed to maintain hierarchies. The Melungeon narrative also teaches us about resilience and the fluidity of identity. Over time, many Melungeon families have reclaimed and celebrated their multicultural heritage, challenging stereotypes and demanding recognition. Their story underscores that American identity has always been more diverse and complicated than simple racial categories suggest. Ultimately, the Melungeon experience illustrates the ongoing struggle to define belonging and identity in a nation shaped by racial exclusion and inclusion. It encourages a deeper understanding of how race, culture, and law intersected to shape American history and continues to inform contemporary discussions about race and identity.